Okay, welcome back to the second part of One Man's Faith today. We are in chapter four of Galatians. Hopefully we'll get to chapter six, but <laughs> uh, maybe next year before we finish this book. Last week we looked at to know or to be known. And based on Galatians uh, 4, 8 through 11, it showed that, that there were three things. Those that don't know God, those that know God, and those that are known by God. And we looked at, we looked at what that we looked at what that was. Those that don't know God are those that don't have Jesus Christ in their life. Those that don't know Him, those that haven't made Him Lord. And, and if you're at that point, you need to make Him Lord of your life. Let Him have His way in your life. Drop control of your life and put it on Him. Because He knows the plans that He has for you. We just talked about that, Jeremiah 29. And He made a book of you even before you were even thought of. And He wants you to fulfill those plans. And you can't do it. You cannot get it done without Jesus being Lord of your life. And if you want to be in the presence of God forever, then you've got to accept Jesus as Lord. That is the way. Jesus Christ is the only way to the presence of the Father. The Bible tells us that. Well, Neil, I don't believe the Bible. Well, you've got a choice. You can either continue on in that unbelief and Biblically, you will end up in hell. Or you can say, well, maybe there's some truth to it. Maybe I ought to go ahead and step over and accept Him as Lord of my life. I mean, which would be better? To assume there is no God and hope there is no hell? Or to assume there is a God and hell and that it would be better to be on the positive side, so to speak? I mean, what's it going to hurt? He says he knows the plans he has for you, and they're for welfare, not for your calamity. It just means that you have to make him Lord, which means that he has control of your life. And if he has plans for you, and they're good plans, then what's it going to hurt? So, those are those, those that don't know God. Now, to know Him, you need to be known by Him. And you're known by Him, I believe, when you accept Jesus as Lord. Then He really knows you. It's not a general casual acquaintance. It's that He, he knows you because you have now stepped into a relationship with Him. And when that happens, you can now be known. You can now know Him because He knows you. When you step over into that relationship with Him, He gives you His Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes and teaches you all things, shows you all things, gives you the power to overcome anything in your life. Because He is in covenant with us, that includes, that includes deliverance, salvation, healing. Yes, healing. Because it's part of who God is and it's part of His plan. Because we are to be different. It means, it means uh, I will say financial, financial success. It means that, that we are not to be under when it comes to finances. He tells us that freely, uh, it, uh, he says, give and it shall be given to you. Pressed down, shaken over packed down like you do, you know, I don't know if you've done a recipe or not that calls for brown sugar, but normally it calls for packed brown sugar. you got to pack it in there. Well, that's what, that's what He gives to us. He gives that to us. And He wants to pour it out upon you. I don't mean that we're to be billionaires. It doesn't hurt to be. You see, God finances His kingdom through people. And 
if we can grab hold of these concepts that are part of the covenant that he has with us, and listen, he doesn't break covenant. If we can, if we can transform this mind to be able to see, then we can, we can walk with him. And he will lead us through. And so being known by him is dependent upon your accepting him. And when, he, when you are known by him, then you will learn to know him because he wants us to know him. He wants us to know who he is. Okay, um, and I wanted to leave you with uh, 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 three, three things here, okay? Come to know him. That's, that's what we've been talking about. Knowing him is a relationship. It's not like reading, reading the Bible and just say, okay, now I know him. No, knowing him is a relationship. It's walking with him. It's letting him lead and guide us. It's, it's letting him know who we are. It's a conversation. It's, 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 it's more than a marriage. We need to learn to come and let him be Lord of your life. That, that takes surrender, okay? Because you are surrendering your life to him to let him be Lord of your life. The next thing is now that you have come to know him, in other words, you've accepted him as Lord, then learn to really know him. Okay? Learn who he is. He is not an ogre. He's not a dictator. He is a father. He is a loving father, better than your earthly father. Now, some of you may have had terrible fathers, and I'm sorry for that, but that is not God, and that is not indicative of who God is. God, the Bible says, God is love. And love, let me just give you, let's just read the definition. I mean, you probably know it, but let's, let's, just, let's just refresh our mind about what love is, and we can find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, love is patient, it is kind, it is not jealous, love does not brag, it is not arrogant, it does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, it is not provoked, it does not take into account a wrong suffered, it doesn't rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in truth, it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. There are 15 characteristics here of what love is. This is what we call agape love. It is, it is God's love. And the Bible says God is love. So if God is love, then we can substitute God here. We can say God is patient. God is kind. God is not jealous. God does not brag. God is not arrogant. God does not act unbecomingly. God does not seek his own. God is not provoked. God does not take into a, a account a wrong suffered. God does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but God rejoices in truth. God bears all things. God believes all things. God hopes all things. God endures all things. That's who God is. And we, so we need to learn to come to know him and come to know who he is. We need to learn, we, and we can learn from his word. You can see the heart of God throughout the word, it's even as, and especially in the Old Testament. The New Testament kind of gives us the heart of Jesus. The Old Testament gives us the heart of God. And so we can see that God developed a people that he wanted, that he protected. As a matter of fact, we were looking uh, last night, I believe it, uh, it was Psalm 136. Psalm 136, I called it, is, is, is like a rap psalm uh, because, uh, because of the way it, uh, it is laid out. It's got uh, 26 verses, and every verse ends with, for his loving kindness is everlasting. 
So it goes through and it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to God of God's, for His loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords, for His loving kindness is everlasting. Every verse, His loving kindness is everlasting. It's trying to tell us something. This is loving kindness is associated with covenant. It's a special love, and it's the love that God has for us. And so we get to see even in the original covenant, in the old, what we call the Old Covenant or the Old Testament, we see who God is. He, he's, he's, a God, uh, he's a God that made the universe. He alone does great wonders. He has made the heavens. He has spread out the earth with waters. He has made the great lights. He made the sun to rule by day and the moon and the stars to rule by night because His loving kindness is everlasting. And that word everlasting means forever, perpetual. It will never end. It is forever. So His loving kindness, the, the love that He has for you and me, that is depicted in 1 Corinthians 13 is this loving kindness. And when we can grasp hold of that, when we start to learn who He is, and then, and then spend time with Him. Learn to spend time with Him. Don't just come and say, Father God, here's my grocery list. Save the world. Do these things. No. Learn to know Him. Come into His presence. Sit for a while. Uh, He gave us the model prayer in Matthew. He says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. In other words, we come to Him in praise. Psalm 100 says, We enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. His courts is where He sits. It's the courtroom. It's the throne room. It's where He dwells, and we enter that by coming in praise and thanksgiving being in His presence. And you can do that by just coming and being in His presence. And start with praise. Ah, i got to take a break. So let's take that break, and I'll be right back. 